Hi there. Welcome back to my shop. Thank you for stopping in. I want to send a thank you out to Doug Miller of Wood Spun Round for sending me his sticker. I appreciate it, Doug. And in the future, it will always be up here on my virtual wall when I use that. So thank you again. And now for today's project, well, I'm sure you already read the title, so you know what's going to happen. Let's go make that ornament. According to what's written on the end of this piece, this is from British Columbia, so I probably got it from George on Vancouver Island. So thank you, George. It is you, and it looks like it was cut in 1980, so it should be plenty dry by now. Now the pith is right in the center, but I will be hollowing this and turning the pith away. And I'm going to put it between centers. Got on a spur center here. I'll use my live center on this end. And just see what I can get out of this piece.
I'm going to drill two and a half inches into this with a 5 8 inch Forstner bit. And I'll be turning this at 250 RPM. I do not like to overheat my bits. Now I'm going to drill the rest of the way through using a 3 8 inch bit. All right, that took it all the way through. It looks like I let the shank of the scraper touch the corner in the hole. I will need to fix that or it won't be 5 eighths of an inch anymore. All right, I tried using CA glue to put that small piece back in. I don't know if it's going to hold. It certainly won't if I hit my handle around here again. This is very thin, but a little CA glue spilled there, I'm going to see if some 400 grit paper will take that out of there. Turning in reverse at 500 RPM. <laughs> no, it's stained. It looks like that's going to be a feature. All right, c'est la vie. I'm about a quarter of an inch thick, I believe, right in there. Maybe three eighths. Seems fairly even. And I need to go to the larger side to get in there deeper. And as far as I can reach in there with this, it doesn't seem to change much. I'm going to be quite happy with that. I can't get my finger in there to find out what's going on. I want to use this straight one down in there, right to the bottom of where the 5 8 hole becomes the 3 8 inch hole. So I'll do a little bit more in there, see what I can accomplish.
I don't know if you would have been able to see it out there, but blowing in here because the hole goes right through, dust was flying right up, right out into my shop. So I think that's as thin as I dare go without being able to see what I can do. So now I'm going to reverse this so that I can turn this part off. Now I get to introduce you, possibly, to a new mandrel. At least this is new to me. I was shown this during a demo for our Central Alberta Wood Turners Guild by John Smythe, who is an amazing turner. Now, you may remember I put a 5 8 inch hole down through here to about this point, and then a 3 8 inch hole through the rest of the way. Now this part is turned to 3 8 of an inch, this to 5 8 of an inch. So when I put this over here, push it up to its limit, I can bring my tailstock up with my live center without the pin, which will fit over top of that 3 8 inch pin, and I can tighten it on there. Now let's see what this does at 1000 RPM. So now I can turn all of this away and turn this contour down to that pin. And I will do it very gently because I do not want to lose this now. I'll be turning this with my 3 8 inch spindle gouge. First, of course, I'll get this ring off of here. I need to be very gentle with my cuts because the 5 8 inch opening up here is much thinner than what I intended it to be. <laughs> Typical gourd turning. All right, once again at 1000 RPM, 3 8 inch spindle gouge. I realize you may be thinking, why doesn't he use a parting tool in here? Well, quite simply, because if I use a parting tool, I lose the opportunity to get the practice I'm getting with my spindle gouge. Now I'm going to sand this much off camera and then come back and finish turning this. All right, I am going to use the parting tool to take some of this bulk away so that I can get my fingers in there to apply the axe polishing and abrasive pastes. Then I will use the spindle gouge to take some of this mass away again so I can get in there with the pastes. 750 RPM. Now, 
And I think I'll get it just a little smaller in here. That's looking good. Now it's time for the polishing paste. Oh, that feels and looks just lovely. All right, time to take this part off here. Very, very close. Just another little bit should do it. All right, I believe that has it. There we are. All right, just got a few loose fibers here. I think I should be able to trim them off with a very sharp point on this skew chisel, just right on that edge. 1000 RPM again. All right, I think that's ready to be removed. And there we have it. Now the question is, is this the top? And this the bottom? Or is this the top? And this the bottom? If you have an opinion, please share it now. Well, I have decided to use this as the top. And the reason is, if you can see there, you can tell that there's lots of wood in there to glue the top part onto that this little eye screw is going to attach to. If I did it the other way around, there's not much here for wood and it may fall off of the tree. I would rather have the finial or icicle fall out of it then have it come off of the tree and perhaps break. That's my reasoning, and I guess now I gotta go find something for the wood for the top piece and the finial. I'm going to use my three quarter inch collet chuck because this piece is so small, it should fit in there just fine. 
I have an adapter on here to go from my inch and a quarter spindle to one inch threads that I need for the collet chuck. So I'll put the chuck body on here. Then I put the collet inside and the sleeve nut over top of that. I have some washers on here just to do a little spacing and keep this out past this nut to make sure I can do some fine sanding and use Axe paste on it. I think it's already fine enough to start with 320 grit. All right, I'm going to use denatured alcohol to clean off the dust, and then I'll use Axe paste. All right, I just need to put that small screw hook in there. Now I'll work on the finial for the bottom, the icicle.
All right, the only thing left to do is to put this little eye screw in there so it can hang. And I'm just using a 1 16th inch bit right in that little dimple in the center of this. Okay, it's a little early to be hanging it up. We don't have a Christmas tree up yet, but it is ready to go. This U is really pretty wood. I very much like that. Well, there it is. I'm pleased with it. It's not the nicest one ever made, even by me, but it's all right and surprisingly light. Hollowing this ball out really made a difference. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you remember that Christmas is coming, so get on your ornaments too. And if you enjoyed this, please click the like button and share it with others. Those help a lot. Leave a comment if you like. I really love reading them all and I'm trying to answer all of them as well. So have a great day in your shop now and stay safe. I hope you'll come back next time. Bye-bye now.